Welcome back in, everybody, to the Birds 365 Football Friday here uh, on the channel. Uh, joined now by Ed Kratz from SI.com. Ed, welcome to the show, man. How you doing on this Football Friday? Hey, guys, I'm doing great. Do we have any uh, breaking news to talk about from wow, yesterday? Yeah, I don't man. know. Um, Happy Jahan Dotson Day. A lot of energy, a lot of uh, Berman-like energy from Ed Kratz. I'm impressed mm -hmm. this morning. Yeah. Um, uh, All right, let's give it. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. Let's hear Ed Kratz's take on the trade, Jahan Dotson to the Eagles. Well, I, you know what? what I, I really don't see any downside to it. Um, you know, they needed depth at the receiver spot after AJ and Devontae, and he brings some flexibility now, and he's better than anybody else that could have played that number three. I mean, Covey, I'd like to have seen him get a. A shot it's at it, high, man. I'm disappointed for him. Yeah, really but he, he's limited in that he can only play the slot. And I, I think, think he could do it, though. I do. You I think, think he can play be, outside? No, I think he'd be really good in the slot. Yeah, I, I, think I, I agree. But I think they they want that flexibility, you know, the versatility to have like a Dotson be able to go outside if you were to motion Smith or Brown into the slot. And I think we've seen Kellen do that a lot in camp um so as far as him giving you that flexibility and that versatility to go outside on occasion uh, the, uh jahan dotson does that um you know you got a question now the depth you know after them how many receivers you're taking and we can get into that and how many who you're going to keep how many you're going to keep um but as far as liking the deal i mean i don't see any downside to it, you could say, well, you know, they gave up a third round pick and you now that's pretty steep, but they have two and the Eagles have had some big draft classes these past few years. They drafted nine this year. I think it was seven the year before it was nine, three years ago, you know, so they've, they've really done a good job bringing in, you know, younger talent, controllable talent that helps, you know, them pay some of the guys that need new contracts. They're bringing in this younger, cheaper labor. Um, so, you know, how many more guys do you need to take? I think they still have seven picks Yeah. in next well, year. Well, and they had four seventh-round picks, so you don't yeah. need four. So you give no. up a couple of the, that's so not. I, I don't have a problem giving up the draft pick at all. I know three is a little, little on the steep side, but, you know, hey, that's the, that's the cost of doing business. Um, but as usual, there's always two sides of the story. Why did Washington give up on a guy they just drafted in the first round two years ago? We saw the Steelers do that with Kenny Pickett. Now the Eagles have two former number one picks on their roster. They're, from the they're getting that whole picks. They have the whole 2022 draft class. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They're trying to get it all. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. It's it's bizarre. And they have Saquon Barkley, another first round pick for another team. I mean, you, you have to give Howie a lot of credit. Uh, you know, I think unless you're getting Brandon Ayuk at this stage of, of summer, I think Jahan Dotson's <laughs> well, a, that's not. But I, I think people would want that. But, you know, yeah. come on. At some yeah. point, there's one football comes into it. Brandon's right. really good. Uh, I love the deal. Bottom line, I love the trade. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of impact do you think he has on the offense from like a playmaking standpoint? I know he's great depth. I think he kind of opens it up to allow Kellen to move AJ and Devante around, which I think is a good thing. But what kind of impact do you think he has on the offense? Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, this guy caught 11 touchdowns in 29 games. I mean, that, that's pretty good production for a receiver. Is he going to catch five touchdown passes this year for the Eagles? I I'd be surprised if he does that, but listen, we, you know, 17 games is a long season. You never know what could happen to Smith or Brown. If they were to, you know, get a nick or a bruise that would cost them a game or two, you know, maybe he, his production will increase, but you know, we haven't seen a lot of, uh, I guess, traffic for the third wide receivers in years past. Zach Paschal uh, didn't catch many passes. Alameda Zacchaeus didn't really have that big of an impact. And, of course, Quez Watkins, um, you know, he was fast, but he had a hard time catching the ball. Jahan Dotson's fast, but he can catch the ball. Um, you know, I think there will be some traffic for him, uh, especially the, Kellen, the way Kellen Moore's offense is going to look. I think he's going to run on and off the field, and he's going to give the defenses – uh, different looks from week to week. And I think Dotson will be part of some packages um, going forward. So, you know, is it going to be a high volume number? I, I don't know. Uh, probably not. Maybe 30, 35, 40 catches somewhere in that range um, for maybe, th I don't know, 400 yards. It's so early to say. I mean, he's not even in town yet as far as I know. We haven't talked to him. He's got to get up to speed. The Eagles open the season in two weeks in Brazil. Um, is he going to be ready to play a role then? Uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, 
you mentioned the why. That's something I always look at. Like, why is Washington giving up on the 16th overall pick in the 2022 draft uh, with two years left on this deal? You know, if you think about that earlier, then the Eagles gave up on Jalen Rager. Um, and he had a lot more production. Now, first off, the guys in place now in Washington, Adam Peters, Dan Quinn, Cliff Kingsbury, had nothing to do with drafting John Dotson. Um, they're in a rebuilding situation. Uh, so the draft pick is probably more important to them. But they also did it in the division. I mean, if you're Adam Peters, Ed, you, the last thing you want is Jahan Dotson beating you in a game um, as, as a GM. You know, you're trading him to your in division rival. So, any concern there that Washington has given up on this guy so quickly? Well, we see interdivision trades all the time. Well, the Eagles and Commanders made a deal during the draft. The Eagles traded up with the Commanders to get Cooper DeGene, and they gave up two picks that the Commanders turned into Mike Stanistrill, the cornerback from Michigan, and their tight end, Ben Sanat, who I think is going to be a really good player um, as he learns from Zach Ertz. So you see these moves all the time. You can go back to what was it, 2010 when the Eagles traded Donovan McNabb to Washington. Yeah. Um, you know, the Eagles have That's traded the one that you know, player I uh, draft picks. Yeah. I mean, draft picks. If you go back to the Devontae Smith draft, that was like Dallas Giants Eagles all wrangling right after each other. It happens yeah. quite a bit in the draft, but player for player. And I, and I go back to different Donovan's at, at the end of his career, but I'm glad you brought that up because I hadn't talked about it. The Eagles kind of knew, all right, Donovan was shot at that point. And I'm sure Washington was thrilled to, to pick him up. And there was nothing left. Point I'm trying to make there is the Eagles knew better than anybody else where Donovan McNabb was. In theory, the commanders, much younger players, so different from that standpoint. But in theory, they know Jahan Dotson better than anybody else. And... They decided to make the decision. Just a little bit cause for pause, isn't it? I, I, I absolutely, I think so. And you mentioned the new regime. Maybe that plays a part of it. Uh, I saw that you wrote a story on SI.com, uh, I think last night or yesterday, about a source of yours saying that he was kind of mopey. Um, you so, know, uh, the, yeah, it was kind of cruel. But you know, it's interesting <laughs> because you can tell. I also this morning Ed, I saw the Washington Post and their sort of explanation for the trade. You can tell they're getting the same information, the people down in, in, in Washington. And this is how the Post described it. Inability to play through contact, you know, bad fit for the vertical passing scheme run by Cliff Kingsbury. He's fluid and fast, but not sudden or strong, is what one scout uh, told the Washington Post. So, yeah, I mean, listen, he's got a little body of work and he just didn't fit the commander's scheme. You know, how different will the Eagles scheme be for him? How will he approach the scheme? Maybe he won't be as mopey or, you know, maybe he'll be a little more physical. You know, him and A.J. Brown are really good friends. Um, they work out all, all together in the offseason and, you know, being with A.J. and the way A.J. works, you know, maybe that rubs off on Dotson. Maybe he comes into this culture, which is vastly different, I'm sure, than Washington's was when he was drafted. You know, Snyder was still the owner. You know, they were through some turmoil. Uh, maybe he wasn't real happy. So, listen, you know, I, I think he can run good routes. I think that's another thing about him. I think he runs precise routes like Devontae Smith. Um, and we'll see about the physicality stuff if he's able to work through that. Um, I think he can get open. I mean, listen, he, he caught 500 plus yards two years ago. He had over, I think, 400 last year. Um, so whatever the limitations are, it's not like he's not putting numbers on the board. Yeah. Uh, and the by 11. the way, even the people that criticized him said he was a good route runner. And they said, you know, but he's a good route runner. So yeah. everybody kind of agreed on that. Uh, so that's that's part of look, he's got talent. I mean, he's the 16th pick in the draft. And yeah, and you know, he's, got, he's got a contract that is team friend, you know, it's team friendly. He's still under control for two more years, and then the Eagles have a team option for a third year if they wish to keep him. So, you know, he's gonna be able to grow 
inside this offense. Now, how long this offense stays in place with Kellen Moore, who knows? He may be hired to be a head coach after the season if the Eagles have the kind of success that everybody thinks they will. But still, he's still you know, in Philadelphia for two years. He's going to be teammates with A.J. Brown, Saquon Barkley. You know, I think they missed each other by a year at Penn State, um, but they're still close friends. So, you know, he's coming into an environment that he can't, you know, it, it's going to suit him just fine because of who he knows on the team. A couple other Penn State players on the team, mind you, a shout out to Jeff. Oh, Kerr. boy, Penn Jeff Kerr is excited. <laughs> We're talking Jeff. I thought Hello, about that immediately. Want, like, oh, oh, Jeff Kerr. Yeah, but that. it's four guys now from Penn State, right? Now, I don't know if Braden, Brandon Smith, the linebacker, will be on this team, you know, after next week or um, – P.J. Mustafer, he's the other Penn State guy. Yeah. Uh, but everybody talks about Georgia and Alabama, and they lead the way with six guys each on the roster Penn currently. State. Um, Penn right, State speaking of Brandon Smith, Smith uh, uh, Brandon Lee Gowton was on the show. He had a good category. I want to throw at you, Ed. Uh, that just reminded me. Uh, best Eagles player who's not going to make the football team. Uh, now, BLG went Brandon Smith, who you just mentioned, Penn State linebacker. I think he has splashed, was out a little bit with uh, – what did Brandon have? Did he, he had a concussion uh, that took him out for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I went Perry Nickerson, the slot hmm. corner. Who would Ed Kratz go? Not going to make the team. The best player is not going to make the team. Well, you know, listen – I think Vic Fangio could have some surprises with some of the keeps right, that he's right, going to lobby yeah. Howie Roseman for. I, I think there's going to be, you know, one or two surprises that, you know, Vic is going to want to keep and how he's going to probably let him keep them. Um, so I'll throw a name out there, but I think they might keep this guy. I, I like Julian Aquara. Um, I think he, he is, you know, answered every single practice. He's been there. I, he, you know, he's shown flashes to me rushing the passer. He's shown them to me in, in pass coverage. Um, I know Howie Roseman, when they signed him to that futures contract back in whenever it was, January or so, um, Howie alluded to some of the guys they signed. And he was one of the guys that he mentioned as someone they're really happy with, him and Darian Kennard, the offensive uh, lineman. So I think Julian Aquara is a guy that could be kind of a surprise cut or the best player that the Eagles could cut. But again, I'm not so sure you won't see them keep him. Uh, yeah. I don't know how. That's but a good pick. It's a yeah. good pick. I like it. Um, by the way, the Eagles just posted Jahan Dotson arriving at the Novacare complex. So he is here. What are we doing here? Why aren't we down in South Philly, baby? We should be yeah. there. Do you think he'll be available to you guys today? No. 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 I don't know how quick the turnaround is normally with these guys. <laughs> not, not quick. <laughs> well, Ed, everybody's talking about offense. I mean, we've been talking about the $175 million offense still on blue in the face for the last four months. They added another piece. What about the defense, Ed? Is this defense good enough for a team that wants to compete for a Super Bowl in 2024? I, I don't know. Um, not yet. But again, here we are in August. I think it's going to be kind of an evolving process for this defense. And, you know, you want to be playing your best football probably after Thanksgiving. <laughs> You want to kind of stay in the hunt until the holiday, and you hope by then the defense will be clicking. Vic Fangio will have it all sorted. Um, but I like the versatility and, and the flexibility that Fangio is showing us. Uh, you know, he's shown a lot of blitzing from the linebackers. I think he has the personnel to do it. Um, their defensive tackle group, I think, is, is pretty good. Um, I think it's coming along. I like Thomas Booker. His name's been thrown out there. He could be a guy they keep. Um, you know, but Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis, those are the linchpins of this defense. They're the ones that are going to have to carry this team and they're going to have to play 60% of the snaps at minimum. Uh, I think for that defensive front, I think they're deep. Certainly at Carter. Carter's got to yeah. be over that. I would argue. Yeah. And you know? Carter, I, you know, listen, that guy's, he's good. He's, he's done a lot of good things in camp. As, as good as you can for a defensive tackle. You can't really sack quarterbacks, but he's been in the backfield an awful lot. Um, but yeah, I think their, their linebackers are, are, are pretty good. Um, you know, uh, who's going to start? We don't really know. We think we know Devin White and Zach Bond have gotten the majority of uh, first team reps there. So it'll probably be those two, but I like Trotter, how he's progressed. I like Ben Van Sumeren has done some good things. Um, 
obviously, N'Kobe Dean, terrific camp. So I like their linebackers. You know, safety may be a little light if something happens there. Avante Maddox is probably your first guy to go onto that back line. And then maybe James Bradbury. Um, I, I think they're going to keep him. Uh, I really do. Uh, and until Sidney Brown get, gets back, I'm not sure Sidney's going to start the season on the active roster. He'll probably be on the pup list, probably miss the first couple weeks of the season. Um, so, you know, you hope that they can kind of get through that, you know, until he gets back, you hope they can get, he can get through that, uh, at safety. Um, but I, I, you know, they're deep at corner. So I, you know, I, I, I like the defense. I mean, I, I think, you know, maybe right now, not right now, they're a Super Bowl type defense, but I think they can be. I think Vic Fangio is a terrific coach um, that he's going to play to his player strengths. He's not afraid to, you know, mix and match personnel groupings. Um, I, I think it's going to be exciting, but I think it's going to be a growing process for this defense. And you hope that by the, you know, by the holiday, by Thanksgiving, they're, they're up to speed and they're ready to uh, make a push for the Super Bowl. No doubt. Ed, you think Bond's going to get that start at linebacker? Here on Birds 365, I listen to my man, John McMullen. He tells me, Vic Fangio, the conspiracy, he's waiting for you guys to leave the room before he, he puts his, his true start. I, I, I have too much respect for Vic to say that he does not realize that N'Kobe Dean is his best linebacker. Ultimately, yeah, maybe he's going to be on the field week one. That's my belief. But yeah, I, I think he'll be on the field. Is he going to start? I, I don't know. How many snaps is he going to Well, pull? And, and by the way, when I say that, because uh, BLG brought that up yesterday, it's a good point. He's going to play the most reps. Like, you know, I think we all start back in the day, I'm a big basketball guy, used to be a big Sixers guy, not anymore. You know, Mark I. Baroni started on the Sixers championship yet. <laughs> Bobby Jones played the most minutes, Hall Oof. of Famer, um, you know, and he finished. It was more important than one who started, who finishes. Yeah. And the case up here is it's not who starts, it's who plays the most reps. And that last practice, Ed, I started counting. Nicobe was on the field for the most reps, first team. I think that's where we're going. Yeah. Well, listen, you, you want to be careful with him, too. It's the same with Saquon. You know, when we first had Kellen Moore, he said, you know, we have to be careful with the number of snaps that Saquon takes. We want to get him through 17 games. And, you know, I think you could say the same with Nicobe. You know, he had the foot surgery. He, you know, he's been banged up. He had the shoulder questions coming out of the draft. He's had a lot of wear and tear on that body when he was at the University of Georgia. So I, I think you might see them try to monitor his snaps. I'm not sure he's going to be out there for 95% of the snaps. I, I don't see that, um, you know, especially early on in the season. They want him to play 17 games. And I think the best way to do that is to kind of monitor his snaps. You know, maybe he plays 50% of them or or even less than that. And you throw Bond and White out there. But, yeah, there's no question that Vangio probably loves N'Kobe Dean. But he's probably also very aware that the guy has had an injury history and we have to get him through 17 games. So we can't play him uh, as many snaps as we might like. Um, I want to bring up two players who I think should make the team. And I want to hear Ed Kratz. Will they make the team? One is Patrick Johnson and the other Tristan McCullum. Just McCollum. Um, boy, they're good questions. I, I think Patrick Johnson makes the team. And and again, I think that's probably over Julian Aquara. I think they play the same position. Um, but I think Patrick Johnson probably gets the nod there. Um, hey, he made a play in the game in game one. You can't overlook that. Uh, you know, I thought I think he's had some good reps at, at camp. Um, but I think Aquara has too, but they love Patrick Johnson. This would be his fourth year on the team. Um, good special teams player as well. Yep, good special teams player. So I think, yeah, I think Patrick Johnson is on the team. Tristan McCollum, man, that's a tough one. I guess it depends with Bradbury. And that's the problem when you say, okay, we're going to keep James Bradbury. We're not going to trade and we're not going to cut him. is now you're looking at, you know, guys like Tristan McCollum, you know, are they going to keep five safeties until Brown's healthy, uh, you know, and roll the dice with Bradbury? I think McCollum deserves a spot on this team, but I just, I'm not sure there's room 
for him if they go with four safeties, which probably is what they'll do. And it's going to come down to him or Bradbury, I would imagine. Um, but as of now, I, I don't think Tristan McCollum makes the team, and and that's going to that's going to be trouble for the Eagles because I think someone would pick him up if they try to, you know, eventually get him to the practice squad. Ed, training camp's officially in the books, man. It's crazy. It came and went. At least it did for me. I know maybe it didn't for you and Johnny. Oh, it was Mack. a grind for work, us, man. Working hard, yeah, you know, going down there every day. John doing mul multiple shows a day, multiple columns. He was uh, appreciate you guys and, and the work you guys do because you really give us some good insight into the football team. What other key takeaways that we haven't hit on that did you have from camp? Do you feel not you're more of an objective guy as a reporter, but you feel better about this team after camp, worse about this team? Anything stick out to you that that swayed you one way or the other after seeing 16 training camp practices? Um, other than the fact that John McMullen is probably the most under the radar, hardest working man in the business. Um, true, Ed. You're yeah, right. Yep. Yep. And he loves it. That's the thing. He brings the passion with it. But um. Yeah, things that stick out. I mean, I, I'm a little concerned about the offensive line, to be honest with you. I'm, you know, Mackay Becton to me, and you know, I had this big crush on him in the spring. I, you know, I thought, man, that guy, you got to get him on the field. But then you see him in camp, and you know, he's quick to leave the field with whatever nagging injury he has, causing concern. He limps off at one practice early, doesn't come back the rest of the day. But then you see him out there the next day. Um, now I talked to him, you know, uh, I think it was the last day of camp on Wednesday. And, you know, he said it's just general soreness that he's battling through. But I, you know, I wonder if he's going to be the guy that's going to play all 17 games on, on this line. I think you need to have a good backup for Makai Becton. And you wonder, OK, Tyler Steen, we haven't seen him since he was carted off uh, against the Patriots. He hasn't even been out of practice that I've seen. I don't know. Maybe John, you saw him, but I No, he hasn't. He hasn't. Yeah. Been out my concern with Tyler Steen is he he's got more of a serious injury injury than we're than we're thinking about. I think it could be more of a foot type injury, maybe a list frank type of situation with Tyler oh, Steen. Boy. Um you know you gotta hope that he can you know over these next two weeks before they go to Brazil get healthy. But we'll see. So Mackay Becton, to me, is another thing I don't like with him is he comes off the field and he gets down to one knee right away. Like, I wonder about his conditioning. The rest of the offensive line is, you know, moving around. Both, you know, they're, they're up. They're on two feet. Becton's taking a knee as soon as he leaves the field. So, you know, I, I, I wonder about his stamina, uh, first of all. I wonder about his ability to stay healthy. Um, you know, you don't want him limping off after, you know, 10 plays of a game and then you have to go with a backup right yeah. out of the shoot. So he doesn't have that, that Landon Dickerson toughness. Well, I'll tell you, he, that guy, Landon he's limping Dickerson. around. He got his toe Ooh. stepped on in one practice, he, but he's still out there playing. I mean, it's amazing. Know, that's, why I mean. so really, tough. that's why you bringing that up about back to kind of alarming to me. It's like, it's one thing yeah. if he has an in serious injury, but he leaves and then he comes back the next day. Yeah, and, I, and, 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 and by the way, uh, under the radar guy is going to make the team because of Ed's, what Ed's talking about. Nick Gates, I believe, is going to make this football team. Yeah, yeah. Because he's I, got a lot of experience. Um, he's He's been better than Max Sharping and Matt Hennessy. Uh, the other veterans they brought in. Um He's always got his belly out. Love that for an offensive lineman showing <laughs> off the belly. Um, yeah, uh, I think he's going to make there. the football team. I think he's going to make the football team. Um, and and part of that is what, but that and and that I'll wrap it up there with you at Kratz E. Make sure you follow um, Ed on the X platform. Read him at si.com backslash NFL backslash Eagles. Philadelphia Eagles on SI is the new branding we have. Um, does a tremendous job there. I said this earlier, and I want to get your take. Obviously, the Eagles offense, it's an all-star team all over the place. We know how good the starters are. Defensively, rebuilding unit. However, I think the Eagles are deeper on defense than they are on offense. So take the starters out of the equation. I think they're deeper on defense than offense. Agree or disagree? I, well, yeah, I would probably agree with that. Um, again, the depth on that offensive line to me is a bit of a concern. I don't know how good it is. Um, so right there, uh, I think that gives the defense, you know, the edge. Uh, I like the versatility that these defensive players have. You know, you can line Jalen Carter up outside, 
if you want to take advantage of his quickness. Um, you can play Quinion Mitchell in the slot or outside on the corner. You have safeties that can play slot like Avante Maddox. Um, yeah, I, I think the linebacker depth is good. We talked about that. Um, not sure about the edge. I don't know how deep they are on the outside there after Sweat and Huff and, you know, I maybe like you got BG can still play. Jalex Hunt's better than yeah. I thought it was going to be developmental. Nolan Smith. I don't, I don't know about Nolan, but right. I, yeah, he's I don't either. But and that then Patrick why, Johnson. Oh, I mean, yeah. I think Patrick could be good in a small role. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So yeah, I think depth wise. Sure. I would agree that they're deeper on defense than they are offense. Jahan Dotson certainly changes the depth perception uh, on that offense. Um, they're, but yeah, they're, I, they're, they have Kenny Gainwell. I think, well, you know, I think is the most underrated player on this team. They have good depth at running back. Will Shipley has done some nice things as a yeah. yeah he surprised player. me. He he impressed me a bit through camp. Ed. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I think what can slow this team down. Obviously, injuries. You can say that about other every team. You know, if you get hurt at a key spot, then you're in trouble more times than not. Um, it, it's just the burden of expectation. And, and I wrote oh, about yeah, this with man. Quinion Mitchell and first round picks and that burden that they face of carrying that first round torch. Uh, Brandon Graham's story is well chronicled. He had the bust label for a couple of years, shed that. Jordan Davis, this is a big year for him, year three. You know, he's kind of right on that line, I think, between not being a bust, but not being, you know, living up to that first round pick that the Eagles spent on him. Um, that's why I thought, you know, when they, when they gave the coach of the year to Brian Dable a couple years ago and the Eagles went to the Super Bowl, I kind of railed against it. Everybody said, well, Sirianni has this great team that Howie Roseman gave him. But listen, you still got to get this great team to play together, uh, to accept their roles. And, and that's hard to do. Um, we'll see if Sirianni can do that in this new CEO role, CEO role that he has carved out for himself. But I think the burden of expectation uh, can really weigh on a team you know, um, as they start the season, especially. And this is not an easy start for the Eagles. They play five of their first seven games away from Lincoln Financial yeah. Field. They're not yeah. home. They don't have an extended home stretch until November 3rd, yeah. which is absurd. Um, so, you know, you hope that, listen, this defense can, you know, kind of evolve and become what we think it can be. And you hope that the burden of expectation doesn't weigh mm -hmm. on this team and it, that it impacts their uh, ability to execute on the field. No doubt about it, Ed. Great, great insights today, as always, man. We appreciate having you on the program. You're one of the best covering this football team. We'll be reading your work at SI.com. Great job in training camp, Ed. Get some rest, man. I thought you guys were going to get some rest after training camp, and Howie's like, nope, let's get a trade done. By the way, we haven't, we haven't even talked about the, uh, the game. There's a game tomorrow. I know. It's um, like I forgot the game was tomorrow. Eagles, Vikings, which nobody's playing in, so you might as well forget it. But uh, Ed and I have to go to that. Um, yeah, that's football. I like watching football. I don't care who's out yeah. there playing. You know, it'd be fun to see Julian Aaron Hall versus that's Will Greer. Spirit, I love it. Yeah, it's it's cool, man. So thanks, Andrew. I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, brother. All right, guys. See ya. Hey, thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed Kratz joining us. Great stuff from Ed Kratz. I love. Yeah, we haven't around. talked the game at all. <laughs> we we didn't we didn't even touch it, John. We didn't even yeah. mention the preseason yeah. game. Uh, tomorrow, we only have four minutes left here on the show, and I got to get to my man James Carver. John, he dropped us another 20 bucks. He said, Address it after Ed. I'm going to address it here after Ed. He wanted to follow up, so he drops in two super chats today. Uh, James, thank you, man. Thank you for your support. He says, To clarify and can address it after Ed, effectively, CB1s won't be able to travel with AJ because then that puts a CB3 on Dotson or Smitty. But Q makes travels by e Eagles not needed with Q because we have three legit Q QB CB ones for most teams. I think he's drawing comparisons to how it's going to be hard to cover the three Eagles receivers. Yeah, I, 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 I from a from a defensive perspective, and that's why I brought up Jim. I think it has. I think people don't. It has more to do with their confidence in their talent. In other words, like if if you have one of the top tier corners you might not travel because you don't have confidence in your second and or third guy because they have to travel if they're traveling. Uh, so it has more to do. It doesn't have to do with the receivers on the other side, as much as your confidence in your own guys. So if you have sauce Gardner, like the jets have good corners. So the jets are pretty confident that they can do whatever they want. Um, and they're not going to be deterred by the the opposition 
whether it's AJ, Devontae, um, Dotson, Tyreek Hill, Waddle, whoever the third wide receiver is down there, Jefferson, Addison, you know, what they're doing with Jalen Naylor. Um, it has to do more with the 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 corners and if the defensive coordinator or the the head coach in the case of the jets has confidence in those other guys um and then you know the receivers on the other side that's generally what it has to do with good stuff that makes sense does that make sense it does it it does make sense good stuff there Uh, james thank you for the support man we appreciate it as always. Thanks everybody, by the way, for the support, John. We had great numbers today. We had great support from all of our people. We have 175 likes. Look at that, everybody. Thank you all for, for liking, man. It means a lot to us. We work hard and, and, and we appreciate that. You guys listen to us. You know, we could be talking into a void, but we don't. We talk to you guys um, and we appreciate that. John, I, I guess we only got 60 seconds or so to go. I guess we got to hit this game a little bit, John. What's the expectation going into the game tomorrow, man? Yeah, nobody's playing. I mean, that's what the Eagles did on 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 Wednesday, and they actually shipped it from. They were originally going to practice on Wednesday and Thursday. They scaled it back because they essentially had a, a inner squad scrimmage to try to replicate a joint practice that they didn't have and get a ton of reps for the key players. So, um. <laughs> And they also wanted to go walk through, walk through Thursday, Friday to get the legs back of the players that did, um, that are going to play the younger players. And, um, you know, Minnesota was honest. They've already admitted they're not playing. Um, their starting quarterback, which is Sam Darnold, um, or their backup, which is Nick Mullins, our old friend who was here. Uh, Nick Mullins is the backup. Now they lost JJ McCarthy. So in theory, they're down to their fourth quarterback, uh, which will be Jaron Hall. He's going to start the game. They've already been honest about that. You're going to see a lot of Jaron Hall and Tanner McKee. Um, and it's football, I guess. Is Will Greer going to get out there, you think? They haven't played him. I, I do think Will Greer is going to get out there. Yeah. And so is Matt Corral, who the Vikings just signed. Oh, good. The old 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 Miss quarterback who uh, yeah. I think I don't it was know if anybody third. remembers in our chat. We used to have a guy, John, before Matt Corral got drafted. That would what was every day he would drop a fifty to hundred comments. Matt Corral draft Matt Corral draft <laughs> Matt Corral. I don't know. The guy disappeared after that draft. I don't know where he went. If he still maybe he changed his name or whatever. I don't know if anybody in the chat remembers that. No, guy. he's a legendary. Uh, uh, I think he's in the Birmingham Stallions Ring of Honor. Uh, that's where he's been. I'm joking. Uh, yeah, I, he was the third round pick, I think, Matt Corral. Yeah, he was. Um, yeah, many some projected him to go first round that year. I remember that. Yeah, he was a he was a he was a really good um, college quarterback at Ole Miss, but got some size issues. Um, and even the SEC is not the NFL. Um, and it's a whole different ball game. He did win. Uh, as I said, he won. Um, what is it? UFL, I guess now UFL championship, uh, with the Birmingham stallions. Nice. Um, and now he's trying to beat out Jaron Hall to be the interesting note, which I mentioned on, on Twitter, Jaron Hall's a very good friend of Britain Cubby and they work out together in the off season, both Utah guys, um, with Puka Nakua as well good stuff johnny mac we're going to wrap up here went a little bit over time i want to thank everybody for being here today uh and john i have one question on the way out and it came from one of our chatters i believe it was you slagger uh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get to the chat it was thousands of chats ago i will not be able to find it but i do want to ask you the question because i think slagger brought up a good question earlier in the show now uh, by the way 189 likes can we get the 200 appreciate everybody slagger asked john he said Earlier, and I'm I'm paraphrasing because I don't have the chat in front of me, but he said, you know, John used to talk about the drop from wide receiver two to three as a a grand just for the sake of the conversation, a grand say a grand canyon size drop off. How much did they close that gap with the acquisition of Jahan? Oh, a lot. Yeah, they got a lot better. This is the legitimate NFL player um who 
again, the, the goal is not to replace AJ or Devontae if they get hurt for a week or two. The goal is to persevere uh, and be able to win a football game maybe in a little bit of a different fashion, but you still need somebody to play 70 snaps at receiver outside um, and move around in the case Kellen's going to move people around. But um, he can do that, and, he, and they're, they're better equipped. They didn't – I've said pretty consistently before this trade, they didn't have that player on the roster. Now they do, um, and that's an, in, that's an improvement. Um I think it's a significant improvement because I think the depth was a serious, serious in- I- issue um, yeah. before this trade. Season ending if we lost one of those guys, and I think they did give you a little bit of insurance uh, on that. But we'll see what he's able to do. John, great show today. Thanks to both of our guests, um, Ed, uh, Paul Domwich and Ed Kratz. I, thought, I love talking to Ed, John. I always say that, but I do love talking to him. He's, he's, he's really f- uh, great to talk to. Does a great job in, in this role. Uh, thanks, everybody. 197 likes, man. You guys absolutely crushed it. We'll probably get there before the music ends, but we are going to get out of here a little bit over time. Johnny Mac, great work today, man. We'll talk to you tomorrow with the preseason game, man. We're going to do a little football 24-7 after that sucker. Uh, talk some Nick Gates. Talk some Will Greer. Talk all sorts of back end of the roster, guys. So a lot of fun there. John, great show today, man. Great job covering this training camp. Great breakdown of the trade. Good stuff all around, Johnny Mac. Thank you, brother. All right. Happy Friday, everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for listening. 200 likes. We just hit it. Happy Friday, as Johnny Mac mentioned. Thank you all in the chat. Couldn't do it without you guys. We appreciate you so much. Catch you later on in the channel. Uh, fo- National Football Show with Dan Cilio coming up 2 to 6. Uh, and then the preseason finale tomorrow on, on, on Jacob Sports. We'll be covering that as well. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you next time here on Birds 365. You've been listening to Birds 365, the destination.